Well, All good right. morning, everybody, and welcome to Heart Talk. Today is the first day of January in the very first day of 2019. And we were just talking about that before I hit the record button. Wow. Just get used to writing 2018, and here they go, changing it on us again. But anyway. Oh, yeah, Happy New Year, everybody, because it is Happy New, New Year's Year. Day. So mm-hmm. uh, welcome to the first day of January, and it's brand new, which I hope is going to be a wonderful year, 2019. Uh-huh. Welcome to Heart Talk. So anyway, let me remind you that Heart Talk is so much more than just an ordinary call, and why is that? Well, because this is where you can speak your mind straight from your heart, and that is precisely what we're going to do today. But Before we get down to um, our subject matter, let me tell you that Heart Talk is brought to you by me. That's right, me, Sue Ellen Dickinson. Uh, For those of you who do not know, uh, I am an author, and I have written three wonderful books, and you can find them on my website, which is nomorems.com. And by the way, Go on over and visit my website if you haven't already and become a subscriber. It's so easy and it's free. Just scroll down. <coughs> Pardon me. Scroll down about halfway and you'll see where you fill in your name um, and your email address. And just your first name is fine. But this way, you're going to get uh, on my list. And you will get all my emails, all my notifications, everything you ever wanted to know about nomorems.com, the heart dot call, and then some. So um, stay up to date with everything that's going on and become a subscriber uh, right now. Just shoot on over there and take a take a visit and have a look. It's uh, it's a great website full of lots of information and and so forth that I know you're going to like. And not only that, when you sign up as a free subscriber, I'm going to send you some free reports and some data and information that, well, just um, it's it's pretty good information and maybe some things you just didn't know before. So go on over to nomorems.com, scroll down, sign up as a a subscriber, and uh, you'll get on my mailing list. And you won't miss a beat from there. And while you're there, check out the books that I mentioned. There are three of them. Right there, one, two, three. And uh, the first one, the first book that I wrote is called No More MS, My Journey Back to Life. And this is an amazing true story. It's really my, my story about my miraculous and dramatic recovery from the grips of multiple sclerosis. Um, and, um, you know, you might want to grab a, a box of Kleenex because it gets a little dicey in there as far as emotions are concerned. Um, and I think that you probably will be able to relate. But um, I didn't hold back. It's no holds barred. I never hold back when I'm writing um, about my experiences. And that's the case in that book, No More MS, My Journey Back to Life. And then... There is my cookbook called Flavors of Home, and this is just chock full of really delicious down-home recipes. It's quite the cookbook. It's really one of those down-home things, like I said, full of delicious, nutritious uh, recipes, and ve- they, they are very easy to create because we know that we want to, you know, in a lot of cases, change our diets because of the MS. Well, this is a good place to start. So check out <clears throat> my recipe book and also my, my other book, which is incredibly inspirational and very uplifting. It's something that you're not going to be able to put down. I guarantee it. And it's called Looking at Life from the Other Side. And what Looking at Life from the Other Side is all about is a compilation of little short stories in there. So um, I'll just ask you a quick question. Do you really believe in coincidences? Well, I'll leave that as an open-ended question. See for yourself, because when you read this book, it'll, it'll bring... Uh, it'll, it'll bring um, it's kind of jaw-dropping in a lot of ways, but it'll bring chills up your spine, guaranteed. And that's what it's all about, but true. Two stories. So there you go. Looking at life from the other side, my cookbook, Flavors of Home, and No More MS, my journey back to life. Please check them out at my website, nomorems.com. And don't forget, sign up as a subscriber. It's free, and you won't miss a beat on getting all the latest and greatest information of what's going on in the MS world and, well, in the world in general, which is what we're going to talk about today. 
Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I seem to have a frog in my throat today. Imagine that with all this crazy weather that we've been having around here. <clears throat> excuse me, and elsewhere too, I know. And we can talk about that if you wish. Because, you know, we were talking about all the crazy things that are going on in the world today. I mean, it's almost as if the world has gone completely upside down, topsy-turvy, inside out, and just utterly mad and insane. Well, when I was doing research for what we were going to talk about today, and I thought, you know, I I really need to find something a little bit, well, interesting that's going to fit for the first day of this amazing year I think we're about to embark on. And I think I found it because this really, this article got my attention because um, in all of this constant turmoil that's around us, seems like on a daily basis, um, Kaylee Wyatt has found what she calls get this. She calls this the key to contentment. And she really expresses that perfectly in this very well-written article that I'm about to read to you. So if you didn't get my my article, my my email, or um, haven't been to your email box this morning, um, don't worry about it because I'm going to fill you in. Because what Kaylee's talking about here has been mostly lost in our contrived modern day era that we find ourselves living in these days where artificial intelligence, oh, let me say that again, artificial intelligence has all but taken full control of everything in our lives by ways of electronic frequencies, transmissions, and just about everything that touches our lives. Anybody thinking iPhones, computers, TVs, and the list goes on and on and on. Do they rule our lives or what? Do we allow them to rule our lives or what? Well, I think we this bears discussion. What do you think? But anyway, back to uh, where I was. I digress. Because Kaylee has held on to the things that are truly important in life. And she understands and holds close to her heart the knowledge and the value of the simple things in life that really matter the most, things that have long been forgotten or never even known by some people. I mean, let's be honest. I wonder sometimes if these new generations coming up even know or understand some of this that we're going to be talking about today. So without, um, you know, driving off any further into the weeds, (laughs) let me get cracking here and let me read to you this wonderful article that is sure to touch your heart too like it did mine by Kaylee Wyatt. It's called The Key to Contentment. Let me take a sip of my juice and I'll be right back. Pardon me. Okay, here it is. The Key to Contentment by Kaylee Wyatt. Well, it's that time of year again. Thanksgiving is behind us and Christmas is coming. In previous articles, I've talked about the stress of the holidays and how that affects our bodies. But this year, I want to go a different route. This year, I want to talk about contentment. It's something that I think is important, not only when it comes to holiday gifts, but when it comes to our health and our lives as well. We don't always get what we want, but finding contentment, despite that, is the key to real joy. Now, you may be wondering how on earth I can mention being content with multiple sclerosis. How can contentment find its way into the crippling fatigue, the pain, the cog fog, the numbness, and more? Well, let me first say that it took me a long time to find contentment in the midst of all of that. But finding contentment, despite your circumstances, is a beautiful thing. You see, if I always based my contentment on my circumstances, then the probability of me ever finding contentment would have been shockingly low. My contentment isn't based on what's going on around me at the moment, though. It's based on joy. I found that being content brings me joy, and having joy helps me remain content because they go hand in hand. My health is only one part of my life, and while it's brought many trials, it's also shown me in greater intensity all that I do have. I love my life, 
and mess and all. And I have many things that bring me joy. And because of the joy I've found, the contentment has followed. Now, here are a few things that have, that have helped. Spending quality time with my family, making memories. Focusing on all that I have and not all that I don't have. Focusing on all that I can do and not all that I can't do. Not limiting myself. Not sweating the small stuff. Giving myself grace on the hard days. Finding new ways to strengthen my mind and body and doing things I love, such as writing and exercising. Finding hope in my faith and relying on the truth that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Some may think that I look look at life through colored painted lens. They may say, oh, there's no way to have such joy with MS. But my joy is incredibly real. My life is wonderful. And even though MS has been a tough part of it, I've actually learned joy and contentment through it. It's taught me that life is too short to allow your circumstances to skewer the view of everything that's standing right in front of you. I've personally watched a family member allow their pain to keep them from living, and I just refuse to let that be me. Until my body is no longer allowing me to, then I'm going to live. I'm going to continue to embrace the little everyday things that do bring me joy. And I'm going to continue to smile at how God's hand in my life has brought me contentment through the trials. I will not let my joy be defined by what has been taken away from me. Instead, I'll continue to find the things that bring that bring me happiness, and I'll cling to those. I won't let, I, I, I will not expend my energy on negative talk and thoughts, but instead use it to continue to find contentment. I hope this holiday season you can do the same. May you find days of joy and contentment this year, because no matter how small, there is always something to be thankful for. So cling to those things and those moments in life that make it all worth it. Happy holidays. And that's from Kaylee Wyatt. What do you guys think? What do you think about her message? I think I think she's right on on the key of being content and I say that partly because I remember after I went in the wheelchair, one of my friends said to me a little while after that you made a whole new life for yourself, which to me is again, I'm not saying it was she's saying I'm content, but she's saying I you know, created a new life and this is the way my world is now and go ahead with whatever, whatever I want to do. I don't um, hold back. So you didn't find that limiting. You looked at did did you look at, at, at look at it as um, almost um, another door opening? You know what they say, Heather. And by the way, I'm I missed you when I when um, you came on. So welcome to Heart I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Happy New Year, by the way. But and Happy, Happy New Year, Happy Heather. New Year. <laughs> you know when they say when the, the, the old the old adage, you know, when one door closes, another one what? opens. And that's kind of what I think I'm hearing you say about... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I, de- I would say that's what she was saying to me, that, yeah. um, you know, like, this is my world now. There's nothing you can do but what your world is now. I, and when I say that, there are things you can do. But in if you look at, at the big picture of it, there's nothing you can do. So now this is my world, and I'm not just going to sit back and do nothing, right? And, and um, you know, so she, when it, for her to say that I've created a new life for myself, I have. That's a very interesting way to put it. That's mm-hmm. a very, yeah, very insightful way to put it. Yeah. You've created yeah. a new world for yourself. Yeah, be, or a new life for yourself because that, that is, well, new world, new life. Yeah, and, you know, uh, Heather, we talk so much about perception and perspective 
um, on Heart Talk here, don't we? And I think that is a beautiful example of it because so much of the world we engage in, or even if we're a spectator to somebody else's life or, or whatever, um, yeah, your perception is the world. You know, I, I'm a great believer that, uh, you know, everybody <clears throat> wakes up in the morning with the very same choice. <laughs> we all can make, you know, the very, we, we, we all have a choice to make the, the decision. Are we going to have a frown on our face? and go around and be gloomy Gus all day long, or are we going to really strive for that smile and that better attitude? Everybody's got that same choice. You know, when you really think about it, that that really narrows <laughs> narrows things down, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Turn that frown upside down. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah. and it takes work, doesn't it? It does. Do that, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, because I, I think it's easier to be negative than it is now. That's not to say that stuff doesn't happen. It happens to everybody all the time. Oh, and, oh, yeah. you know, it can happen out of the blue. Don't we know that? Duh. I mean, this happened to everybody. But the thing is, you know, when, when we get uh, hit like that um, and life ambushes us, and it can, boy, we all know that. Um, you know, sometimes you've just got to, you know, absorb the blow but then you've got to look at it for what it really is and say, okay, okay, you know, time's up. You know, I felt sorry for myself long enough or I've cried long enough or I've been down in the dumps long enough, you know, whatever. Um, let's, let's take a bigger look. You know, I've, I've had my emotional um, tantrum over this long enough. You know, let's look at the big picture and let's, let's, let's get real. Let's, let's look at this realistically and look at it in a realistic perspective. And, um, yeah. It sounds like uh, that worked for you. Yeah, go go ahead. Yeah, keep on keeping on. That's right. Yeah, I, and when I when I, I say it doesn't mean you know okay, just because I went in the wheelchair, blah blah blah, it doesn't mean that's the end of it. It's like I'm doing physio that helps me to keep going, etc. So, um, um that you you do you still do lots for yourself or try to improve yourself in lots of ways that sure you can do that but at the same time you're going on with your life as it is now right like you're not being stopped by it right exactly and you you just you just hit the nail on the head you don't let it stop your life you don't know because it there's so much more to life <laughs> If you don't mind, how has it changed your life or not changed your life, Heather? How how did that pan out for you? What your friend said. How well, does it apply now. One of I'll say one of the first of all one of the big things is that I I had to sell everything like my home and my property and move into a long term care facility. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean that in itself is is a profound difference, right, to be there that, and um, even just, I think, was it Christmas Day or right around there, um, this woman, woman, she actually was a caregiver of my mom when my mom was at home, and she is now being a companion to someone in the the, uh, long-term care facility where I live, and, like, she came down and talked to me, and she said, like, are you content to stay here? Or, and she was talking to me about someone else who has um, full day care mm-hmm. and is living mm-hmm. at home. And, and like I said to her, yeah, find out how, she, how she's afforded, how she's doing it. Because, yes, I would like to be in my own home partially because then you can do your own cooking or have someone, you know, the person that's there, your companion that's there with you, help you to do cooking, which would be a, a big difference to um, being here and, and eating the cooking they are here, no matter, you know, I've told them to take out dairy, I've told them I don't eat anything with wheat, blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, I, I, but if I was at home and doing my own cooking, then like you say, even with your recipe book, you could be following those recipes which were helpful to you, so therefore I would believe they might be helpful to me. 
Right. But but in the meantime, I'm here and out. That that's where I am. Mm -hmm. So you've made you, you're having to make that adjustment. <clears throat> By the way, is is the the food? It sounds like that's a big deal for you. Is that right? It is. The, the, yeah. Yeah, it is. Do they um do, do they do they uh, comply with your wishes, like no dairy, no wheat, that kind of thing? Yes. Yes, okay. she'll do that. But but at the mean at the same time, you get a plain piece of fish, nothing, no spices, nothing on it. Mm. And you'll maybe have, or a pit, or plain chicken, nothing on it. And you'll maybe have that two or three times a week. Mm. So, I mean, I I don't want to eat like that all the time. You know, like sure. you just have it, like a, a, a total repetition. Now, um, I was having some of my friends prepare my food, which was another huge expense. I'll bet. And, um, in what was it, August, I started having stomach problems. And so my doctor wanted me to go on the food from the facility so that she, she knew exactly how, like she could talk to them about how they prepared it, blah, blah, blah. So, so I did. And that's when all this started. So I've only been on this diet for, I don't know, since like, I'll say September or so. And like, already I'm tired of it. And I've only been on in a very short few months. So, you know, it's, it is a big deal to me. And, and even when I was on the other diet, um, my one of my goals was that, you know, having my friends bring in the food and that, that hopefully I would prove, improve myself enough that I could, again, get my own apartment where I could be doing my own cooking. Mm -hmm. So, so it is, it is a, a big thing. And actually, Sue Allen, I want to talk to you later or have emails with you later because I want to join your group of, you know, taking Dr. Um, Cartwright supplements and working with your group to see what that could do for me. Oh, good oh, news, good. Heather. Good news. That is awesome. You bet. <coughs> Excuse me. You bet. And I will help you every step of the way. And uh, you're talking about the MS challenge, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. I am music to my ears. Yes. Let's be in touch. Um, either way, um, you know, email, phone, wh whatever. Um, boy, that's, that's, that's great news. Yeah, because, you know, that is helping lots of people. In fact, while we are, um, let me give you a word of encouragement. Um, we've got... Um, two people that I'm aware of right now on the call who are part of the MS Challenge. And if you guys don't mind, um, Day and Toretta, Go maybe can you give her a little uh, – she's just started. We can, we can hear – and I can hear it in your voice, Heather, and I do not mean this critically in any way, but I can, I can hear the need for change, that maybe things have just kind of stagnated a little bit um, in certain areas. And, you know, I'll be very honest that the food is so important. I'm like you. I love to cook. I love being creative in the kitchen and, um, you know, doing different things and different flavors. Um, and it's, I, yeah, um, my heart goes out to you because, you know, bland diet is okay for a little while. But, um, yeah. But anyway, I digress. Um, we've got two people here, um, Toretta and Day. Would you guys mind um, stepping up and giving Heather a word of encouragement about what's happened to you, about maybe what she could expect? Because, Heather, there's just a little bit of a thrill in the air when you hear these guys talk about it. And um, they have improved. Who wants to go first? Um, Day could probably go first. Okay, go ahead, Day. Okay. Well, let's see. When I got started with the MS Challenge team, I I just kind of, I guess you'd say I just shot up like a rocket and started doing all sorts of stuff I didn't even imagine that I could ever do again. I mean, like cleaning the bathroom and stuff like that. It's just like, wow. And now I'm going to have someone to help me out here a little bit because I keep forgetting a few things here and there. That's okay. So... so yeah, if you can explain to Heather, <coughs> excuse me, 
I think that rice went down the wrong tube. <laughs> okay. I'm mean, eating a rice cake these days. Oh, anyway. bless you. I'll let you clear your Thank throat. You. Yeah. Well, first of all, Heather, um, we go into this knowing that everybody is a little different, even though we've all got the same thing. Everybody's a little bit different. And therefore, this is not a one-size-fits-all program. Okay. So, um, but there are certain things that we do in the MS Challenge, which is really important. And um, Day, um, I know you have been very, very good <laughs> at it, but let me just kind of give, um, and so have you, Toretta. Um, so, um, <laughs> and you're next, by the way. Um, but, um, you know, and we, we all know that the, everybody progresses, you know, uh, at, 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 at a different rate, you know, and we've had people, some of them have just shown massive, and I will use that word massive improvement over time. Nothing happens overnight, ever, not in life, you know, no, no matter whether it's MS or, or anything else. So it takes time and it takes work um, and it takes focus. But it's not hard. Would you would you girls agree with me on that? That it's not hard. It's not impossible. It's not hard. It's not I hard. I would not. agree. Yeah. I would okay. Agree. T- jump in, Toretta. Help 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 us out here. Okay. <laughs> when, when I started taking the supplements, it was in my case, it was a little bit different because I'm already doing stuff and my body tires out real quick and things and so forth or another. But when I started the supplements they started working for me at a little faster rate than others. I don't know, you know, what it goes through your body, what it does. But, however, I was I was a year going on a year from when I had to take my first trip, and I pretty much had an exacerbation or something. But um, I'm a very fast walker, so I walk fast. And I just, all of a sudden, my whole body just started getting weak on the right side. And that's where I got most of my damage was my right side. Well, the next year I came back around and I got involved with the program of the MS Challenge where I started taking the supplements. And I kid you not, Heather, I went to the football game. I drove there, (laughs) which is four and a half hours by myself. I wasn't tired. I walked around miles like I did the prior year and I could not make it. I danced. I jumped. I did a lot of things that I wasn't able to do uh, for a long period of time. Um, I think I probably even slipped on some high heels for a short period of time. But I did so much that I wasn't able to do the prior year before I ever started the supplements. So I did see a huge improvement. And like she said, nothing happens overnight, and it didn't happen overnight. But since I've been on the supplements, I haven't been in the hospital with a relapse from my MS. I was in the hospital with fibromyalgia, which is a little bit different from MS. But I haven't had MS uh, problems with MS in quite some time. And as of uh, 2013, I did end up in the hospital that New Year's Eve, January the 1st, I was in the hospital. I ended up in a rehab. And when I ended up in the rehab, I stayed in there and I ended up coming out in a wheelchair. And I was in that wheelchair for a year. So I'm back on my own two feet, and praise God, uh, it's been five years now that I've been wheelchair-free now, actually four years, really, because I stayed in there a year, but five years since I've had an actual relapse of MS. And that's based off of the all of the test results and things like that that I've had from the doctors. So the supplements had tremendously helped me out, I believe, and I will stick to that forever in life that I haven't had any relapses and all that kind of stuff. And I, like I said, MS is not my problem. It's the other things that I have that I go through. But MS, I've been doing amazing. I can even pretty much can't run, of course, but I can jog pretty quickly. So I'm thinking I'm doing wonderful. I'm amazing. And it all, you know, it all comes from taking those supplements and listening to what Dr. Cartwright said, uh, Rudy Cartwright, as well as Sue Ellen. And it's been amazing, and uh, welcome aboard. Yes, absolutely. Yes, indeed, welcome aboard. Absolutely. And, yeah, Heather, we'll, you, you and I will we'll get together and we'll, you know, get this, um, get this all tackled for you. Um, the, one, the one thing that I have all, I, I've 
really the, these guys they've, they've been so wonderful they really put up with me <laughs> because you know i'm i'm such a believer and i hammer this on them all the time and that is that in today's world and we kind of you know ironically touched on that with this this article you know that the world is changing and things are moving so fast and and with it is um, the field of advertising and marketing. Hello. And, you know, it's just always in our face. So having said that, the thing that I'm always harping on these guys, including myself, is really what Toretta and Day have just talked about. There is this (laughs) phrase that I like to use. And this isn't just for MS people. It's for everybody. But in life, particularly these days, and I think we'll all agree with this, is that people... Um, because of the advertising slash marketing world we live in. You know, everybody, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, right? So everybody is always looking for the next shiny thing. You know what I mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that is, um, and particularly in the MS field, now when, when, when I first started this, and Dr. Cartwright too, when we first got into this, there were not, nobody really, not very many people have written a book like I've written. And again, if you want to get my book and you really want to, you know, it's kind of a tearjerker, but I think you love it. It's called No More MS, My Journey Back to Life. You'll find it at my website, nomorems.com. But nobody really had come out with a a book. And I say that not because I'm bragging about it, um, although it's a great book, (laughs) but because um, it was, you know, probably, you know, one of the few things like it available at the time. Well, between that period of time and now, everybody's written a book. I mean, they're, they're just commonplace. And so people will say, well, you've got you've to go read this. You've got to go do that. And it's the same thing with the supplements. And we just heard what Toretta had to say. Boy, and day two, spot on. But the thing is, you know, you get, you know, um, company XYZ comes out and says, don't do what you're doing. I've got something that, hey, you're going to see improvements in, you know, two weeks, three weeks at the most, and you'll be out, you know, jogging around the block, you know, throw away those crutches, throw away that cane and get up out of the wheelchair. It, well, it doesn't work that way. That's not, that's not reality. We all know that. But I'm just saying that, you know, the mindset in this world today that we live in is everybody is, is, is um, persuaded into going for and really seduced into going for the next shiny thing. Now, let's go back to what Toretta and they were saying. Here we have a doctor, a doctor, Dr. Rudy Cartwright. He is a neurosurgeon, that's a brain surgeon, if anybody doesn't know. He not only is a, a well-renowned neurosurgeon, um, but he's an expert in multiple sclerosis. And how much better can it be for people like us to have somebody like Dr. Cartwright who has dedicated, and I mean dedicated, his life to trying to improve ours. And one way he's done that, a big, huge, gigantic way he's done that, is to create these products. We've got the essentials. We've got more logic. We've got heat and sink, and the list goes on as to what each one does. We can get into that another time. That's just to, to name a few. Now, these were formulated. They were doctor, they are Dr. Cartwright's recipe, if you want to equate it to, to creating and cooking, like we're talking about, only it's, you know, it's for the, the body um, to thrive upon. And he has created these in relationship to what? MS and the MS symptoms that we have and suffer from. And um, <clears throat> it's absolutely downright amazing. Some of the things, the things that can happen with these products. Now, you know, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, so I won't, but I will tell you because this is what you know, I've heard him say too, and I say it over and over and over also, um, and it applies to me as well as whoever that we didn't get this way overnight, you know, we, and, and in conversations that we have, well, when were you diagnosed? 
well, I was diagnosed 10 years ago. When were you diagnosed? I was, you know, I guess I've had this for 20 years. It, it, it's, it's a long-term thing. A lot of times we don't find out we have MS until, you know, 10, 15, 20 years later. And you look back over that time frame and say, oh, my goodness, yeah, I, I guess I did. I just didn't know it. It started creeping up on me. It really snuck up on me 20 years ago. Well, see, your body, um, it, it, it wasn't until you really noticed or had to get into that wheelchair or whatever 20 years later or so. And you know I'm just being hypothetical. I'm just throwing that out as kind of a crude example. But you, 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 you catch my drift. Um, but Dr. Cartwright has created these products around the human body that is suffering from these symptoms. Now, I've got to ask myself, and I'll ask you, how much better can it get than having something that's been created for us by a neurosurgeon who understands the human brain um, that is basically, you know, you know nerve, nerve central for this, right? Um, and is, he's an expert, too, in multiple sclerosis. What more could we possibly ask for? And then the other question right behind that one is, what in the Sam Hill do we have to lose by trying it? Really, except maybe a symptom or two along the way. What have we got to lose? Not by much. giving it, you know, giving it, getting a crack at it, right? But right day, I mean, how many times do I hammer, hammer, hammer? You didn't get this way overnight. Give it time. Give it time. Give it time. And. I know you guys have got to be sick of me, you know, pounding that into your heads, but it's true, isn't it, Day? Yes, it is. Yep. Yes. Yes. Because, yes. yes. Yeah. And I know you, 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 get, you get, it's like, Sue Allen, get off it already. And you have to, because I, I'm, I'm sure I get quite annoying. And for that part, I do apologize. But it's true, no, isn't no. it? It's, it's, it's very true. true. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. The one yes, question I yes. want to ask is that Toretta was mentioning about exacerbations, which usually happen with um, relapsing remittent. Now I have secondary progressive. Is that going to make a difference? It should. That's a question I, don't... I can't answer because I have relapsing remitting. Mm-hmm. So I I'm was second. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was secondary progressive. Okay. I, know I was I secondary am. progressive, Heather. Mm-hmm. And I am. I'm living. I'm. I'm li- living proof. Say again. I said that I am. You are I today. Am. I yes. I you have are now. Okay. Yeah. I yes. have had. I guess I've had secondary progressive since the birth of my first son. So yeah. 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 Now I day. I'm going to put you on the spot. You know how I love to do that. <laughs> okay. We'll go for it. I'm not too concerned. I know, I know. You know I'm just teasing you. I Um, know. And this is, Heather, this is, before I go into this question for Day, this is the one thing that I find, and they tell me, um, the participants, um, that is kind of a lot of the, the heavy glue that holds this whole thing together this MS Challenge Group. And it's really similar to what holds our high talk together in so many ways. And that is that, man, we let our hair down, don't we, guys? I mean, yes, we do. probably talk about yes, things we, we might not tell our mothers, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. True. We do. Exactly. And there's, there, are, there are no limits. I mean, we talk about stuff and, that, you know, well, anyway. I, <laughs> little birdie told me, Day, <clears throat> little birdie, told me that you have an improvement in bladder control. I do. I know. Little Birdie told me. Wonder who that little birdie could have been, Dr. Cartwright. Yeah. <laughs> I am <laughs> so proud of you. And why did this happen? And maybe you can explain it to, ev- to everybody if you're comfortable with it. Um, but I know that Dr. Cartwright will encourage you to do and by the way you know nobody is forced to do anything heather but it becomes kind of fun when when we do it all as a group but and you don't need to go into all that if you don't want to today but tell us this milestone because i haven't discussed this with you yet i just heard about it a couple of days ago 
And well, I was over the moon. I was over the moon. I am so <laughs> proud of you. Well, Take thank it away, you. Girl. Okay. Dr. Cartwright has the Memory Improving Reading Book. Okay, and that's because their muscles have memory. And so I've been improving my memory for my muscles by reading his book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm on day five of that one section that's supposed to be finishing up today. And, uh -huh. and so it's like reading 15 minutes every single day. Mm -hmm. and sometimes you can come across those extra read passages mm -hmm. where... Where, where all the letters are pointed the opposite direction. Right. And they're still going forward, it's in the other direction. And I'm actually getting to where I can actually read things backwards mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun. You're practicing. But yes, I am correct. Very, very much practicing. Yes. Uh, on trial three, I think, or train three, whatever it is. But no, since I started reading that, and everything's been shifting back into place where it used to be. And so my muscles are starting to remember these things. And so it's like I almost, almost can go all night without having to go to the bathroom wise. It's really good. But no. And this is the first time in how long that's happened? Oh, golly. A good 13 years? No. Uh, I am so proud of you. And Dr. Cartwright is proud of you, too. I know. Oh, I'm proud just, of you. You know, we were, yeah. And see, Heather, this is the kind of thing we experience <clears throat> in the MS challenge. And it doesn't take, it doesn't happen overnight. And I know you know, I know, I know you're aware of it. Um, right. But, it, you know, that's another thing that I just harp, harp and harp and harp on. And like I said, I can, I can get very annoying. I don't mean to be, but, you know, I, I repeat myself often enough that everybody probably gets real tired hearing about it. But it's true because we need reminding constantly. And that way it becomes the norm because we, we never deviate. It, you know, my, my, the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, what we've got these tools that we have at our fingertips, literally. And not only that, but the sense of family that develops. Right, Toretta? That's correct. Yeah. I mean, and this becomes um, a family. It's not just, you know, a meeting that, that, we, that we gather, you know, um, around once, once a week. It's, it's, it's a lot like the heart tug. Would you girls agree with that in its own way, except we get down, I mean, we get down in the, in the mud and slug it out on the <laughs> challenge. You know, there's yes. no holes barred there. Would you agree? Uh, yes. I agree. Yeah, and we do definitely. have several members also. Mm -hmm. They may not be on the phone call now, but we do have other members just as well as Day and I. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's very true. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's like a ghetto. Oh, yes. Yes. He, let, he was actually yeah. able to walk his daughter down the aisle. Let's tell them the yes. whole story because we've got, and you girls help me remember, okay, some of the details in case I forget. When, when we started, Guillermo, I know you're listening on the replay, man, and we love you, and I hope it's okay to tell your story because <laughs> we're all, all three of us <laughs> are going to tell your story. But um, when Guillermo started up with the MS Challenge, and I've forgotten, what, a couple of years ago? It's been a couple mm -hmm. of years. At least, yeah. The, the, the one thing we do, Heather, um, whenever we come is, um, and I really hold your feet to the fire on this, is setting a goal, okay? Now, there are two goals, that, I, that and this is a requirement. The, the first is a long-term goal. Where do I want to be, you know, six months to a year from now? Where do I want to be? What do I want to have happen? And it's all around your MS, your particular life. What is your goal? It doesn't matter what it is because it's your goal. And then we have a short-term goal. Okay. Um, and um, I, I give that within, what, weeks? Girls, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> for example, what Day is talking about, I would categorize that as a long-term goal. And we can get back to your long-term goal um, because, that, well, I'll, I'll just <laughs> recap and then you can, you can detail it out for us. Go, Day's uh, long-term goal is to go out in her backyard and play with her boys. <coughs> I would and say, that, excuse me again. That is definitely my long-term goal, and I, right. I'm and looking forward to the day when I can. You betcha I will. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, um, albeit the obstacles you and will, you know, are, are, are being overcome one at a time. 
And how do we eat an elephant day? One bite at a time. At a girl. Now, let's get back to Guillermo. Guillermo had some issues when he came on board, just like everybody else. And his long-term goal, which was a year from the time he joined, was to walk his daughter down the aisle. She was engaged to be married, and he wanted to go. Um, he, it would require a plane t- a ticket to get where he needed to go to that wedding, and he was concerned about you know, the fatigue factor and the traveling and all that goes with that. But he was determined <coughs> to do that. And we worked and worked and worked and worked, didn't we? Just like we worked with, with you guys. Um, and lo and behold, guess what? And nothing was in a straight line. Nothing was a downhill. It was up and down, wasn't it? And it is for all of us. But oh, yeah. He, yeah, and he did his part, and he never deviated. And guess what? A year later, he walked his daughter down the aisle and gave her away in marriage. Wow. Yeah. It's neat. Yep. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And there are other <laughs> and, and also uh, Sue Ellen. Yeah. Uh, he had the battle with, was that the heart attack that he had? Yes, yes. And that put him to a status where he had to dip back down, but he still came back from it, and he That's still right. was able to do it. So what he had planned to do, he did it through all the ups and downs, no matter what. Nothing defeated him from doing what he said he was going to do, and he set his long-term goal, and that was to walk his daughter down the aisle, That's and right. it was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Very amazing. You know, I'll never forget, Guillermo, if you're listening on the replay, um, I'll never forget you brought tears to my eyes because you, you called me from Santa Fe when he was down there, you know, um, for the wedding. And um, we were emailing back and forth, but he, he picked up the phone and he called me. And it wasn't a long phone call, but he, he needed a little encouragement because he got, you know, he, he was tired. And you remember the story, you guys, of the little engine that could. Remember that story when we were kids? Oh, yeah. Well, I reminded him of that story. And he became, once again, the little engine that could and went on to achieve the remainder of his goal and Meg did it magnificently well by the way for those of you who don't know the story of the little engine that could let me let me enlighten you just a wee bit and tell it real quick there was a train yard and it was full and and this was you know back in the day when trains were so popular and everybody went everywhere my train. And it, this train yard was full of these great, big, strong, mighty trains. And some were freight trains, and they carried freight from coast to coast through all kinds of weather, up and down, over the mountains, and through the valleys and the dales, and across the bridges over the mighty Mississippi. And there were the passenger trains that were sleek, and sophisticated, and yet very strong. And they carried the passengers in style up and down over the mountains and again across the same bridges over, over the rivers and the dales and the mighty Mississippi. But there was this one little engine over in the corner of the rail yard. But he st- He sat there on his little railroad tracks, and he was shivering. He was shivering because he was so, so afraid he couldn't do it. He couldn't compete with the bigger engines. And this one engine looked down, and she was sort of the mother engine. And she looked at the little engine and said, Oh, yes, you can. You can be just like the big, strong, mighty engines. But you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself that you can go and be just like them. And you can be better. And the little engine stood up straight 
And he looked around and he said, I can? And the mother engine said, yes, you can. But you must say it to yourself. And you say it out loud so that the big mighty engines can hear you too. And they know you mean business. And you can do it because you can. And you must say, yes, I can. And the little engine puffed up his little, his little chest and his little wheels straightened his wheels out on the tracks and down he went. And he looked up at the mighty mountain in front of him where he could, he could go just, just like the big engines could and the mighty engines do. And he said, yes, I can. Yes, I can. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew his little whistle into the air so that all around could hear him. And he said, yes, I can. And he built up this head of steam and down towards the mighty mountain he went saying out loud, yes, I can. 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 And what happened? He built up that head of steam and that engine, and with all he had, he climbed, he roared up that mountain (laughs) on the tracks until he reached the top, saying, yes, I can, yes, I can, yes, I can. And he reached the top, and he looked around, and he looked down on the mighty engines that were staring up at him in awe because they couldn't believe what he had accomplished And as he went down the track, as he went down the track, he was just overjoyed. And he said, I knew I could, I knew I could, I knew I could, I knew I could. And from that moment on, he became the little engine that could. And he joined the ranks of the mighty engines because he accomplished his goal. And that is the story of the little engine that could. And I reminded Guillermo that day that he was the little engine that could. And he did. And you can, too. You can, too. You know, Sue Ellen, I, I know the story. But listening to you, like, say it, it really is. Like, it really makes it come alive. It's really neat. <laughs> Thank you. And yes. Heather, you are that little engine that could, because you can, and you will. I know you will. We all will. Yes. Yes, Day. We all will. Yes. We all. We all will. Yep. I am so proud of all of you. Heather, I am just, I'm over the moon hearing this news. I really am. I'm so proud of you for taking this. Indeed. You are too, Dave? Yeah. Welcome aboard. Yeah. And you can yeah. reach us anytime by email, by phone. We'll be glad to share our information with you if you don't have it, or Sue Ellen may share it with you as well. Mm-hmm. I will. I will. Let's, let's start with an email, Heather. And send me your phone number, too. Um, and, um, yeah, that's the one thing about this is that, you know, we're all here for each other all the time. Um, we, don't, we don't use clocks, really, do we, guys? <laughs> because yeah. we, just, we just don't. I mean, we respect the fact that at nighttime we all go to sleep. And, you know, for those that don't know around here, I do roll up the sidewalks when the sun goes down at night. But we're, we're here for each other. And if we can't be on the phone, you know, an, an email, I mean, it, we're, we're, we're there for one another. Really. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a case of um, if I don't answer you right away in the case of email, mm-hmm. I'll definitely get back to you. Just oh, yeah. Not, not immediately. Yeah, well, I'm the same way, you know. Yeah, but we're we're there, and um, Heather, I am so proud of you. I think, I think, um, I think you're gonna like it. I really do. <laughs> I do think so too. So now you know my. I know you all. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes. Now you know my New Year's resolution. (laughs) That's great. And we're going to help you. So you start thinking about a goal right now. And um, I know, I know. Well, like, for example, um, I would say that, um, like, standing, transferring myself, that's my short term goal. One of my long term goals is I'm wanting to go on a cruise this, um, it'll be more in the fall. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's my long term goal. Is that right? Wonderful. Whatever you set. Yes. You can do it. Yes, you can. You can do it. You I was able to do it. I was able to do it, and I had just got out of the hospital. My cousin had um, paid for all of us to go on a cruise together, and I went on that cruise, and I had just got out of the hospital. I went to my cousin's draft, and I told him, I'm not going to stay in this wheelchair. Despite what they tell me, I'm not going to do it. And I didn't. I kept pushing myself and pushing myself, and I was out within no time. And the doctors were saying, well, we can only treat your MS. Well, you don't have to treat my MS because it's not my MS. I know what's going on. I've learned my body enough to know. And I kid you not, I probably was in that wheelchair about a month or so. And I was like, how, how? I said, God, that's all I can tell you. It's through God and me having that belief and faith that I know I can do this and me taking my supplements and things like that. You know, because like I said, it wasn't the MS. It was something else. And that's something that you got to understand, too, is that with multiple sclerosis, you have a multitude of other things that happen to you. And this supplement was designed for MS. So that's what I'm using those supplements for is the MS. The other things, they've come along for me, but I'm like, okay, the MS doesn't bother me one bit. This is what bothers me, all of this other extra stuff that's going on, and it affects me, but I don't let it control me is what I do not do. I do not let it take control of me, and that's the one thing. My motto is never give up. It's not an option, and when you see emails from me, that's probably what you're going to see my signature as, never give up. It's not an option. I don't give up at all. I haven't given up this far, and that's where I'm going to continue to do. Even through this 2019, I will not give up. I came into the new year bringing in with a cold and a cough, but that's okay because I'm, it's like it's a part of me now. So I do it every year. So it's okay with me. I'm not going to let it bring me down, though, because for the simple fact that MS has not, has not started progressing, it's still in the same place. It's still dormant in my body. I'm in remission. I have been now, and I've been blessed. I've been going on five years now. I've had been diagnosed with MS back in 2011. At first, I did not understand it, didn't know how I was going to live with it and what could I do to get rid of it because it's not going to be something I want to deal with. I just got to get past it. But now it's like it's okay to have MS. It's okay because it's not stopping me from achieving my goals. It's not stopping me from doing anything. But it also brought me a family that I never would have known unless I had been diagnosed with MS. So I'm happy and thankful, and I tell people I'm thankful to be blessed with MS, and people look at me like, what, huh, what? Well, if you only understood the wonderful, amazing family that I have uh, found along the way, and you are part of that family, Heather, and never forget that. Once you're in my family, you're always in my family, you're not going anywhere, okay? You're stuck with me for life. (laughs) 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 And on that, I've I've got to cut us off right there. Time, can you believe it's been an hour? But um, we've we've got to... Sorry, I kind of took over the conversation today, and I didn't intend to do that. You, You did what? I'm sorry? I kind of took over the conversation today. No, they didn't no, no Heather. No, 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 no. You mustn't feel that way. Not at all. Heather, we're here for Never. You. We're here for you. This isn't about this or that. That's not what, what we're about. It's not about we got to do this or we got to do that. No. And, you know, I, I, I always say, you've heard me say, we're going to go where you want to go with, with this. This is your call. And it's okay. And it needed to be discussed and it needed to be brought out. And, um... It's good. It's it's a it's a beautiful thing, Heather. I'm so I'm very grateful that you did. I'm very great, and I know I speak for everybody else. So am I. So, so am so, I. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Because we wouldn't have never known if That's you right. wouldn't have never came out and said something. Exactly. So thank you. That's right. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and we we've all felt that way. I think. Thank um, you, Stephen. Up to that. That's right. That's right. And um, yeah. 
We love you, Heather. We love you. Definitely. And we're going to take yes, real good care of you. Yes, we love you. Yeah. And guys, hey, we've got to can move. I, can I finish it up here for us? Yes, go ahead, Dave. Okay. Another year is dawning, dear Father. Let it be, in working or in waiting, another year with thee. Another year of leaning upon thy loving breath. Another year of trusting, of quiet, happy rest. That's beautiful. Amen. Well, that will be our our prayer. Oh, hang on just a second. Hold on. Yeah, the other thing is, are you, are you guys there? Yes. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, okay. All right. We will have day, um, that will be our closing, our prayer. closing prayer. So let me um, go right now to the prayer list. And for those who might be new okay. to Heart Talk, we always end our calls with a prayer which Day has just recited and we thank you Day for that it's beautiful and uh, also reading the names on the prayer list and um, I did get those names that you sent me Toretta I forgot to acknowledge but I did get them so they will be on on the list Um, and the reason we do that for those that don't know already is we say thank you for bringing us all together I'm sure everybody can agree this is a very very special call and I am I, I am not just believe I know that this was brought together. It was meant to be, and it was um, it didn't happen without the hand of God. Let me put it that way. And so we want to say thank you, and this is our way of saying thank you. So, Day, thank you for that beautiful prayer. Okay, and you're with welcome. That, with that, let me read now the names on the prayer list. One one second, please. Orange juice time. I will now read the names on the prayer list. Donnell, Linda, Sandra, Erica, Shemang, Dyke, Carlos in Canada, Janet Carroll and family, Tish and Luke Roskams in the UK, Mary Ferris, Jeremy Mann, Julie Perkins, Rayshawn Jefferson, Damon Jones, Scotty Williams, Barbara Cleary in the UK, Linda Holly, Sylvia, Greg Evenson and family, Arthur Marcellus, Veronica Lewis, Tanya Thompson, Kathy Piedrick, Mark, Francine Mancari, Tamala Lewis and family, Michelle, Joe in the UK, Carol in Iowa, Edie in Missouri, Alberta in Kansas, Willem Konacek, Sandra Mullen in Canada, Susan, Russ Dizdar and family, Donna and Nathan Leal, Kathleen in Boston, Frankie, Melissa, and Destiny in Boston, Tracy Whiting, Clint and Cliff in Kansas, Phyllis in Kansas, Jennifer in the UK, Linda Jean, Sherry Gudgeon, Sabrina Sutton, Tracy Thacker, Melanie Monteith, Edie Neal, Sybil Wynnum, Manfred Pauli in Venezuela, Donna and son Andrew, Mubeen in Cape Town, South Africa, Rona, Noor, Rami, Ferris, Muhammad, Jill Hahn, Travis and Ellen Thacker, John, Tommy and family, Dennis Walker, Faye, Maria in South Africa, Jennifer, Charlotte Matrisic, Maria in Nevada, Louise in Alabama, Patty in Alabama, Sybil Wyndham, Gloria, Contessa, Mrs. Disney, Ladios, Dr. Paul Hegstrom, Lorraine, Irene, Lydia, Mike Newcomb, Beverly, Raza, Jason, Charlene Kelly, Danielle and Faniel in Toronto, Frankie, Robert, Stacy, Judy, Sarah, Sherry, Ron and Marge, Tim and Michelle, Constance Wadlington, Toretta, Glenda in Kansas, Larry Nichols, Be- Melanie, Floyd, Amy and Eric Olson, Trudy, Gladys, Gerald Taylor, Gregory, Irma, Travis John, Ertis, DeMarcus, Anne, Richard Bresen, Helen, Pearl, Irma, Grace, Rebecca, Linda and Joe in the UK, Dan and Jason Junker, Dion, Joshua and Johnny, Kalila, Aralee, the Marsh family, Julie Mullins, Grant Anderson family, Chad Cowan, Randy Guerra, Barry Walcott, Tina and CJ, Ray, Mackenzie, 
Deborah, Sally, Joe and family, Gina, Mary in Alaska, Veronica Thomas, Karen in Seattle, Michael Freeman, Megan, Trudy, Jeremiah Mask, Gwenadi in Russia, Jeff Olson, Kelly in Texas, Jennifer in Kansas, Geneva Norris, Latasha Coleman, Seth Thomas, Jim Thomas family, Tanisha Washington, Cindy, Guillermo, Eula Cooper, Robert Alexander, Leo Torres, Chris Elias, Jeff London, Jared and John Chambers and family, Eddie Tiny, Leslie Cavazos, Ryan Cadillo, Aaron Marsh, Jimmy in the UK, Valerie and Hillary Perry, Blanche Collins, Flick Mays, Michael Kuhlman, the Pope family, the Baldonado family, Mary Jo and Fargo, Daniel Duran, Dr. Marty Sanders, the Hargrave crew, Lena Davis and family, Sharon in London, Billy Medlock, Lola Striggles, Rondella Canida, Dave McCartney and family, Shay Standifer and family, Billy Kuhlman, Rita Nixon, James Grace, Alton Johnson, the Johnson family, Tracy and Alice Daniels, the Elias family, Arlen, Kathy and Al Matthews, Deborah Yars de Lorenzo, Chadrick Watson, Kevin Giles, Eric, <clears throat> the Collins family, the Johnson family, Trivia Pal Clark and family, Ray, Ray LaBelle, Tony Delcy, Edward McFarland, Seth, Malaya Marnie Horton Fisher, Abe Martinez, Roscoe, Hattie Battle, Alberta and Chuck, Isabel, Enoch Bryant, Sister Wanda Burke, Anthony Canita, Trinity Johnson, Curtis Warren, Susan Trotter, Rhonda Pryor, Wanda Burke, James Washington, Enoch Bryant family, Aretha McKinney, Lee Pittman, Blessed Hartaben, Andre Giles, Penny, Bonnie, Loretta, Ray Charles, Wayne Jones, Jr., Khadijah Cooper, Becky and family, Ashia and Kanisha Morrison, Jeff Olson family, the Sybil Morrison family, Trelina Hope, the Gafford family, Emily Aguilar, Shaladra Kelly, Ann Downs, Irvin Gudgeon, Latosha Coleman, Jackie Clark, Don Orth, Jason Kirkaby, Denise Duby, Miss Stapleton, Mooney, the Mooney family. And Father, the following are the names of the children who perished recently in that fire in Chicago. Adrian Hernandez, age 14. Ariel Garcia, age 5. Xavier Contreras, age 11. Nathan Contreras, age 11. Cesar Contreras, age 14. Maya Almarez, age three months. Loni Aya, age three. Grelani Aya, age five. Giovanni Aya, age ten. Victor Mendoza, age sixteen. Ricky, La Rosa, Paula, Netta, the Flores family, Rose Cummins, Val Hayward, the May family, Stefanzo Davis, Michelle, Mac, Taylor, Ray, Alan, Willie Alton, Asila Freeman, Johnny Blair Jr., Alicia, the Burguano family, the Lake of Stamford, Kashari Warren, Christopher Anders, May Thomas, Kali Parson, Lisa Abbey, Joe Moore Sr., Joshua Judkin, Rachel, Dylan, Wanda, Gordon Biffle, Demarion Coleman, Mary Cox, Beth, Megan, Zachary, Stephanie Giles, Kevin Giles, Arlene Matthews family, the Crawford family, Veronica Enriquez, Dante Marche, and Emerson Pryor. And I will leave you with this. Lord, help me to remember that nothing is going to happen to me today. 
that you and I can't handle. Amen. 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 Well, guys, I want to thank you for being here. I just want to thank you for being here. Heather, we love you, girl. And open arms from all of us. And, um, yeah, this is, a, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Well, I'll email you my, my phone number. Yes, please do. Please do. Now, I've got to work on the replay for this as soon as we hang up. And then I've got something with the family. Is it okay if I call you later? Or we can email anytime. But it's okay maybe if I, I call you tomorrow or um, put, put, put down a good time for me to, to call you. And I know you're an hour ahead of me. I'm central time, by the way. You're Eastern. Yeah. Um, no, I would be on mountain time, actually. Oh, you're what... mountain. Oh, I was thinking yes. of Virginia. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. No, okay. I'm in mountain. Okay. So and... I'm not sure what, how, how, what the time is difference is actually like it might be two or three hours but yeah i think mountain is an hour behind us i believe yeah i think you're right toretta an hour behind yeah okay so whereas virginia is an hour ahead yeah okay okay yeah cool um yeah and is it um i don't know how he wants to handle this but i'm going to you know let dr cartwright know um right away and um do i have permission to give him permission to contact you because i know he, he he would love to Sure. Great, great. And I don't know when that will be again. I know that he has family things going on today. Obviously, it's you know New Year's Day. So, um, but oh, anyway, yeah. we'll, we 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 won't we won't jump on you unannounced. We'll give, give you a heads up. But um, anyway, I'm I'm just tickled pink, Heather, and I know everybody else is too. So that's good. But I all wanna... I can say is to Heather, welcome aboard. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Welcome aboard. And when you You're send out welcome. the welcome email. We'll all have each other's email address. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, think, uh, I think you're going to enjoy it, too, because uh, it, can, it can get a little entertaining, too, guys, can't it? I mean, we just let our hair down <laughs> yes, in a do. very good way. <laughs> but, um, anyway, that's, that's, that's good news. Well, well right now... Um, yeah. Isn't uh, Dr. Rudy Cartwright taking over the Friday calls for now? He is for now. Yes, yes, he oh, is. Oh, okay. So I call those my um, Friday morning training sessions with Dr. Cartwright. Yep, that's 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 correct. So I'll let him know that um, Heather is going to be joining, <laughs> um, and uh, he'll he'll be thrilled. And I know he's going to want to. Um, you know, he, he he may depending on his schedule. He's he's a busy guy. It's amazing, but I know he's going to want to talk with you, Heather. And whether he does it before or or waits until the call, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, we'll 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 cross that bridge when we get to it. But um, exactly, yeah. But guys, I got to send you back out in the world right now. I don't want to, but I must. But um, not before I let you know that you are each and every one of you in my thoughts and prayers. And that will never change. Thank you. Thank you so much. And just to update on Emerson, well. she's doing well. She's doing well. On, on which one? Who? Emerson, the baby, yes. the last one that you prayed the baby. for. Yes, she's oh, doing well. Oh, the picture yes. was so sweet. That was, how old is she now? <laughs> she is what? Is she two weeks? <laughs> oh, my gosh. She was she's an itty-bitty. I know. She's brand new. Yes. yes. Uh, wow. She, what is it? Two weeks now. I believe it's two weeks. Yeah, a little bit two weeks old. I know. So, I know. Well, I'm wow. glad. She's there on the prayer list along with the rest of the family. So good. Thank you so much. Thank well, you thank so you. much. Thank you. Well, you guys have a great day. Happy New Year once again. Happy and New Year. Year. <laughs> I Happy will New see you Year next you. week. Okay. All right. You all, all take right. care. All right. Love you guys. All right. Love, Love you. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.